Welcome back everybody, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Pillars of Eternity 2. Where we left off last time, we were exploring the arena sub-level. We're just kind of stealthing along and we're going to go down some stairs here. Oh, well this looks like either a trap or some form of puzzle. I don't really have the answer to it just yet, I don't think. Yes, as you wish. I'm just going to go see what this is. There are two of them, this says... Only the bold, the reckless, and the fortunate shall pass safely within. There's definitely a treasure in there, though. These ornate bronze fixtures appear to be braziers, so it lines the interior of their metal pet er, metallic petals, and you spy fresh coal beneath a filigreed grating. Someone lit these recently. Had you the means, you might do the same. I will set one on fire, why not? I'll do it to the other one, too. Uh, same thing again. Right. Well, that worked out pretty well. Well, after you. Well, that's sort of an unfortunate turn of events. Is that going to be instant death? All right, Leave go quick. I feel faint. You're fine. Keep going. That's not good. So I got serious burns, and we didn't get to the treasure. Let's reload that. Maybe there's a way we can turn off the fire somehow. That is our ideal proposition. Do we have any ice spells? Or like a potion of fire resistance or something. Well, I don't really want to give my character death from fire. Oh, of course. Maybe we can see me coming. What's this do? Leave it to me. Nope, that wasn't it. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a lot of possible combinations here. Is there any sort of... Anything that'll show what to do? What is it? I'll take care of it. I guess we'll come back to this. Maybe we'll find some sort of pattern somewhere. Nice and quiet. There are some brine imps in here. Not, not alone. Oh, there's a lot of brine imps in here. Okay, let's do some spell things. That's not a very big spell. Let's try combusting wounds. Probably do it about there. Get a bunch of them, hopefully. And you... No prisoners. Oh, damn. I, hear you. I wonder if we can blow up that barrel. Of course. Okay. Let's get to this. Okay, that one died. Pretty easily, I might add. She's fine. Uh, let's move this guy a loth forward a little bit. And a little more forward. We don't want to burn our own character, mostly. That one might blow up. <laughs> that one absolutely blew up. That was really cool. Uh, Shoti went down, but I won't deal with that in a moment. Go flanking. There we go. Well, I'll take care of it. Okay, so she has serious burns and major injuries. So maybe we should rest soon to heal her up. But there's also a chest. Nice and quiet. With a flint and tinder and a tattered note. Maybe the note will give us some insight into what we need to do here. Uh, what was it under? Probably that one. Yes. Tattered note. I wasn't sure about the constructs at first. With these new techniques, or these new techniques may be less extreme than those of eccentrics like Galvino, but it gets harder to remember the once hulking things are moving around like large, noisy, witless dolls. The constructs require daily maintenance, and they make the workers uncomfortable. Still, they've been an effective deterrent to the local wildlife, and I have to admit I've started to feel safer with one of them standing nearby while I work. Otorisi despises the things and avoids them if possible. That alone is a considerable benefit. 
That didn't really help us with the puzzle, though. That being said, there is one more thing to loot uh -huh. over there. And it is... A simple greatsword, so nothing Great. special. Oops, I think I just alt-tabbed by accident. I did. There we go, fixed. Real quiet now. So we still don't have a clue for that. We also need to rest. We have tons of food, luckily, so we're gonna do that. Let's just give everyone... Tea? Rum. Everyone can have rum. Water. Everyone just gets water. It's cheap. And easy. Alright. Everyone's injuries are all fixed up. This might be helpful. There's a Sporling, though. And a Will-O-Wisp. I should have figured that that wasn't going to work, but it was worth a shot. I feel... Those guys have got that one, right? Maybe? I don't know. Go help that. I should turn on Aloth's AI, actually. There. Aloth will do some things now. I'm sure he'll be fine. I missed. Okay, everyone get on the will of wisp now. As you wish. Okay, so there's a spiral sigil. Is that one of the sigils down there? Not really. Nothing in this area, unfortunately. We do link up with this area here. There's nothing sigilly around, eh? Hmm. Okay. I guess not. Let's head up this way then. Maybe you will find something up here that looks puzzle solvy. How's our experience? Okay, we need a lot still. We're not. No. There's a will o wisp up ahead. And some more frozen people. That was actually a pretty easy fight. What are we in combat with? Oh, okay. Combat just hadn't ended yet. I gotcha. Well, this is a grim... Oh, crap. What is that? Greater anomaly. Essence anomaly. Essence anomaly. They're definitely going to come after no us. Uh, okay. Let's start the fight differently than normal. And Idir, go. And you. This way. Okay. Uh, let's take on the lesser essence anomalies first. We still can't do- oh, we can do Flames of Devotion though. So one of them's down. And we will soul cleave this one. Which didn't quite kill it, like I was hoping. Alright, now we're just on the last one. And it turned around. It really doesn't like us. No, we fell. But we'll get back up again. What do we get for our injury though? That's always the uh Important thing to look it? at. Frostbite. Minus five fortitude, minus three armor. Yes. That's fine. As you wish. I'll see it done. Now what is that? 
Some sort of bizarre broken device. This is a big zone, actually. All things considered, it's pretty large. Dim in the lantern. Okay, so this is looking main questy. Luminous Audra Pillar is there, so let's not go there quite yet. That seems like a main quest thing to do. We're just gonna go quickly over here. We're not nice. Oh, there's bats. Oh, there's one Brine Imp. That's not really a significant threat to anybody. What is it? With pleasure. Doro the Reckless defeated seven beasts barehanded. Yes. Leave it to me. Moss and Grime have been scraped clear of large portions of this mural, revealing the vibrant hues of the Inguithin figures beneath. There's an Animancer hat and possibly journal entries here. I'll see it done. As you wish. Oh wait, there's a sigil. Okay. I need to draw this or something. I have literally nothing to draw it with. Um, there's a pen. Do I have anything to draw? Oh, I do. Okay. So it's got like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And then like a giant whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And then a triangle-y at the bottom. And then it's the same on the other side. And then there's sort of like a line through it. Got it. Alright, one down. Let's hope that that's the sigil we're looking for. What's this? Or maybe it's these three sigils. No. Well, I mean, maybe. I'll draw those down anyways, just in case. So it goes like... What, what? Arrowhead looking thing? Whatever, that's close enough. And then sort of a shield... Wisp horns in the middle. And then sort of a weird thing around it. And then like a trinity symbol that's not joined up. Alright, maybe those are the symbols. Who knows? I have no idea. To me. What is it? So at least we have that one. That's possibly one of the symbols we're looking for. Doro the Reckless defeated seven beasts barehanded, it says. Okay, if that's the case, let's go look for other stories that we might have missed. There is something over here. Say, unexplored area, which might have enemies. We're gonna find the way to do this puzzle. Looks like. Oh. Balls. There's another construct. Okay. You know what? That's fine. Hater, you're in first. Everyone else could do their thing. There's two constructs I should have realized that they wouldn't just throw one at me because why would they do that? That's just silly. We really need to bring that one down. Our main character is not exactly an ideal tank. Time to run away. Get a disengage hit. That's fine. Now you can flank. Perfect, we're doing well. Everything is going our way, sort of. Everything is dead. Unfortunately, well, there is a ladder here. Which may or may not lead to something. I think it does. Or not. Sword, Mother of Pearl, Pickaxe. And some... What was that? Silver or something? Um... Hmm. Now we need to hopefully find more of those weird shield things. So we know one of the sigils in question. Was there any more around that looked like that? That's like a wall of text. I don't know what any of that means though. Oh, I missed a body. Now. Okay. That's a sigil. That's the one we saw earlier. Okay, that's one, at least. There's another one there. And another one there. Okay, we got them all now. I think it's those three. So this is sort of... A whoosh? With those whoosh? And then there's another swirly and a dot. And a dot. Okay, and then the last what one is, is sort of a swirly and a swirly and then like a line above it. 
something like that. All right. Yes. Let's go see if we can figure out which three of those are. Well, of course. Okay, this one, this one, and that one. Yes, as you wish. And that gets rid of the fire for us. We get a sword, a gladiator sword. It is a one-handed fine sword, which gives accuracy, or which actually gives penetration. Well, no. Fine gives damage, accuracy, and penetration, I should say. What does Scrim do, though? And Scrim. Scrim is plus 15% melee damage when wielded with a shield, plus 5 deflection when wielded with a shield. That's a really nice sword. We're definitely going to use that on Adir. Because while he is using some sort of magical axe at the moment, which is fine, it's a decent axe, this sword is right up his alley. Where did it go? Did I put it in my character? Did I not pick it up? Because that would be silly. I just left it in the box. I'm like, yeah, this is an awesome sword. We'll just leave it here. There we go. Looks sort of gladiusy. I dare you to Neat. Try that again. All right, I guess we're gonna go to the quest area now. It's that time of the video. We got a cool sword. We finished a puzzle. Everything's looking up. I really liked that, by the way. That was a cool puzzle. We need to find the shields, the three shields. I feel that once you found the first two though, I didn't notice them earlier, but I feel if you have those two, you can easily brute force the lock, because it's going to be one, two, and then you have really have one of four choices. So you have a 25% chance of getting it right, which then goes up to 33% chance if you got it wrong, and then goes up to 50% chance if you get it wrong again. Well, it's not a Risi anymore. Frozen mid-stride, this grim figure is turned towards the colossal pillar of Adra that dominates the chamber. The ashen corpse's outstretched hand rests upon the crystal's dulled surface. Clutched tightly in the remnants of a fist is a bundle of papers bound together by a leather cord. Several more pages are scattered on the ground at your feet. This one's ashen. Means he ain't got no soul for me to tend to, right? Correct. As you pull the papers free, the ashen fingers gripping them slew away, disintegrating into a fine plume of dust. We got the notes, like we were supposed to. Standing here by the lone figure, you are struck with a feeling of dread. The air around you, the very motes of ash and dust, all of it is stagnant and still. The feeling grows worse when you look up at the Adra and sense no energy flowing into its surface. It is as though it's been disconnected from the wheel. It's not a good sign, actually. You place your hand against the pillar of luminous Adra. A dim, warm light emanates from the surface, but it feels cool to the touch. Pinpricks dance along your fingers, uncomfortable, but not painful. A woman's voice, scratchy, distant, and halting, echoes in your mind. Find your soul in him. You concentrate. Peering into the Audra's energy as you would peer into a soul. Its inner light is blinding, but as you become accustomed to it, you perceive the core of the Audra itself. A churning mass of millions of soul fragments. With a jolt, the energy reaches out to you. The Anguithin ruin fragments around you, breaking into incoherent shapes and dissolving to dust falling into an infinite well of dark gray vapor. Even the ground itself disintegrates into nothingness. All that remains is the murky expanse of the in-between. The Audra Pillar, and a skein of golden threads rooted in the pillar that extend far off into the distance. You focus on the threads. You catch glimpses of memories, your memories, mingled among the memories of thousands of other captive souls. The filaments begin to cohere, rapidly twining into a golden cord. With a muffled crack, the cord ripples outward in a violent wave toward the endless distance. The cord undulates over a space so vast that you lose sight of the wave before it finds its end. Then, a heavy creaking, like the sound of mountains shearing under their own weight, washes through the dull gloom of the in-between. A violent force yanks you along the cord at an incredible speed. The murk of the in-between warps erratically, as though you are observing it through an ill-ground lens. Just as quickly as you were pulled forward, you stop. Suspended below a massive figure of ancient carved Audra. 
Like all Audra, it glimmers with energy, but the souls and memories within it are not flowing down. They churn in a vortex that burns at the heart of the statue's mass in some invisible engine. It is Aethys. The great golden cord terminates in his back, sending pulses of energy throughout his limbs as they move. He walks in long, slow strides toward a brilliant pillar of Audra far in the distance. It shines even more brightly in the in-between than Aethys. From within the teeming throng of souls, dozens of eyes look out to you. Through the cord, their collective anguish and despair push at the edge of your mind. Help us! Please! Help us! Their voices echo in your mind. Somewhere within their ranks, you can feel the presence of your own soul slumbering deeper in the gyre. Push past the lost souls to find your own soul. You attempt to evade the lost souls and find yourself within Aethys. But the incredible power flowing through the gods' body repulses you. Not even your Watcher powers can penetrate the massive tides of energy crashing through him. The souls sense your presence and continue to desperately cry out to you. Aethys' stride slows and stops. His head slowly pivots until its great burning eyes are cast back along the cord. As his gaze meets yours, you feel an overwhelming rush of incredible joy mingled with profound sadness. You have sensed similar anguish in lost souls, but never with this intensity. A soothing voice drifts into your mind. It takes great bravery to venture through the in-between, even for a Watcher. A swell of admiration radiates out from the God's heart, a force so intense that it momentarily overwhelms you. You do not need to follow me, for their sake or your own. Something beautiful is coming, something that will save us all. A great light shines from Aethys's brow, so bright that even the souls within him flinch from the source, cowering in fear. Through the glare, you see Aethys's massive arm reach up to grasp the golden cord. The tether carrying energy from the Audra pillar to him that also suspends your consciousness. Give me my soul back. I still have need of it, but do not be afraid, Watcher. Dawn will come for us all in time. Aethys yanks on the golden cord, pulling it from his back. The cord tears into filaments that blacken and dissolve to dust. Without pause, he turns to resume his stride toward the distant pillar of Audra, shining on the boundless horizon. You hear the souls within him cry out for just a moment, before your consciousness is snapped away from them. The in-between goes dark. For a second, you feel a mix of nausea and a sensation like spinning and falling. Then the moment ends. Your consciousness has returned to the Anguithin Arena. The world is sideways, the Audra Pillar upside down. You flinch at the feeling that you're standing on the ceiling. The disorientation overwhelms you and you collapse to your knees next to the luminous Audra Pillar. Previously dim and flickering, the pillar now glows with a strong and steady light. You touch the Audra again, but the chill and prickling sensations you felt before are gone, replaced with a comforting warmth, like the embers of a fire that has just lost its flame. As you return to the world, you feel a hand on your back. You all right? Come on, we just got you back. Despite his tone, you see genuine concern in Idir's eyes. Not even a little. Well, if you're not sure, now I'm worried. I've seen you commune with souls of the dead, but this looked altogether different. What happened? Aethys tethered himself to the luminous Adra, and I connected to him through the essence. Already? Uh, moving things along rather quickly this time, aren't we? His eyebrows arise with sly mischief. What did Gon say? Is he gonna meet us? What do we do next? He charged you with a divine calling, didn't he? Just like he's done for me. Aloth nods, a quiet smile etched across his lips. 
He's after the luminous Audra, and we're gonna stop him before he gets there. How hard can it be to find in a chain of thousands of islands? I wonder what he's after, and why he's been giving me these dreams. The things I've seen, they leave a mark on your soul. She rubs her arms despite the balmy air. I may not know what Gon's got planned for me, but clearly he wanted me to meet you. Loth hums approvingly. I'm gonna check something quickly. We go to reputations. We can see what our disposition is like, so cruel is what we want to be good at. And we don't want to be diplomatic. And we don't really care about being clever. We don't want to be benevolent. We want to be aggressive. So we want to be aggressive, cruel, honest, they don't care about passionate, they don't care about rational, shady, or stoic, they don't care about... So we really just have to focus on being cruel and aggressive and not diplomatic or benevolent. Yes. Got it. That should be fairly easy for us. We do that all the time. Alright, I guess we're going to get out of here. We are officially done with our quest here. People are dead. Well, a lot of people are dead. We might even gain a level by the time we go back and hand in this quest. Apparently, Aethys has plans for us. Or has plans for all of these souls. So it makes me wonder if he's just using the souls to fuel his, like, statue engine. Or if he's stealing souls to become more powerful. Sort of like we did in the other game where we unleashed... I think we absorbed all the souls. Which might have helped Aethys in the long run now that I think about it. Damn that Aethys and his soul stealing. We'll go talk to the group of people. Oh, we, are, we automatically get to do that, apparently. As the souls move past you, some turn their heads in your direction, but most of them seem fixated below you, on the adra pillar beneath your feet. A few nod their heads in thanks, or raise a hand to acknowledge your presence. What do you see that I can't, Watcher? Um... Oh, nothing really. I just saved countless souls by re-illuminating the Adra Pillar. You've now done more in a few hours than some harvesters manage their whole lives. When she turns her eyes to you, they're full of admiration. A lot flashes a quick, please, glance. You guys are weird. A small group of souls has started to cluster around you. One of them is standing a bit closer than the others and gestures for your attention. Watcher, we'd like to come with you. I don't need a bunch of souls following me around. Get out of here. The souls showed backwards in surprise and looked to each other. A voice returns to the back of your mind, intruding into your thoughts like an itch you can't scratch. Take them. They will help you. The souls look back to you, unsure of what to do. Fine, follow Can me. I harvest the souls now? We don't have time for this. As long as we have time, some time for it. I reckon I can wait. Her lips press into a mulish line. Thank you, Watcher. Don't thank me. I didn't do it because I'm benevolent. I'll take care of it. I did it because you said you helped me, and also I should probably wait for those souls to join me. All right, you. You're an animancer. You don't have a name, Vanessa. We will remain here to see to our dead. Well, okay then. If you're sure of what you want to get done, I guess we're gonna get out of here. Time to go turn in a quest and hopefully, fingers crossed, gain a level. We seem to be gaining levels awfully quickly in this game. We're already almost level 5. I'm not sure what the maximum level for the game is, but I imagine it's uh, probably going to be about the same or higher than the White March DLC level cap was. We'll see though. What was it then? 16? 17? I think it was 16. All right, we're going back to Port Meiji, and hopefully we will be able to get a boat. Wait, what's over here? Can we go over here? We can go over here. Well, what's over here? There's a bridge. There's a burial site. Let's do it. A tomb rises from the earth before you. Its stone exterior is well wrought and decorated with reliefs of Tangela and Yati. It likely houses the bodies of someone important to a local Hwana tribe. Search it. 
If you take some time to search the burial site, you find an offering of coins near the remains. Keep searching? Nothing. Okay. It was worth a shot. See if we could get more stuff. I don't think we're timed in this game. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, we'll go to the harp. Yes. I don't think we need to go to Gretchy Street. I should get an Archibus. I need a character that uses Archibuses first, though. I like our new character so far. Jyoti seems pretty cool. We've done that. Oh, also, really quickly, we're supposed to go to the jail. Someone mentioned that there's a quest available at the jail. Maybe we can do that really quickly, too. Ado, stranger. Or is it captain? You have the carriage of a captain. A noble bearing all around. The man in the cell wobbles slightly as he steps forward, fixing an eager smile and glassy gaze upon you. Apreta, you must free me. I am a creature of the sea. I am not meant for this dark place. I will dry and wither like a landed fish. What did you do to end up in here? I did no one any harm. I am at the Kraken's eye so often Thorol should pay me. I sample every bottle for quality. My loyalty has given him heirs. I would have paid what I owed in time. Had I the coin? A drunk. You walked out on a tab, Rigere. Nothing to boast of. And then you crawled up to the governor's estate, pissed on the steps, and resisted arrest. Awesome. Mella, I do not remember that at all. <laughs> right on the steps? I am sorry for the last. I tell you, Savia, I cannot help my magnificent reflexes. You were being very grabby. Do you know your way around a ship? Do I know ships? He asks. <laughs> I know every vessel on these waters, every one. From the galleon to the... to the... every one of them, sir. You're not inspiring you have enemies. These fists will drive them into the waiting arms of the sea goddess. He clenches his fists, raising them above his head for emphasis. I could use you on my crew. What do you need me to do? You see how fate has brought us together? The ice-hearted guard, she has set my fine at 400 pyres. I have... none. I flounder here until the debt is paid. Any suggestions on how to get you out of there? A matter of coin. 400 beautiful coins. That or the key, yes? The door is the thing. Rougier leans in to wrap his fingers around the bars of the cell, rattling them to no effect. He sets his forehead on the bars, sighing. The commander, she guards the keys like a jealous wife. It would take steady hands to slip it from her pocket. That is, if you have need of keys at all. He turns a finger in small circles by the lock and winks clumsily at you. You think me idle to ask this of you and do nothing? I have scratched, sir, a little mortar from beneath the bars at the window at every chance. The, uh, stonework, it is very strong. I can do nothing by hand. With tools, perhaps. With explosives, for certain. Norgund, in the Kraken's eye, he carries many such useful items. All for legitimate use, of course. Animancers, they love explosives. He raises his brows and grins toothily. Alright, we're going to have to finish this in the next video. We are a little bit over time. And since we are recording in 1440p at 60Hz, File size is already monstrous, so this one's going to be probably like 6 or 7 gigs, or maybe 8 by now. So we're going to end it here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below, otherwise I'll see you guys next time. Take care.